things that you're a part of this week that, that people recognize Jesus in you and they saw that there's something different about you. This week we're going to be talking about being marked for change and, and how God has, has placed us in a place where um, our change, the things that have happened in our lives get to be what Travis just said in his prayer, a reflection of Jesus. We're going to talk a little bit about how people brand us, about how our friends can leave marks in our lives and how we can leave marks in other people's lives. And so we're going to be talking today about how, how when we are with people, that we have the opportunity to rub off on them and they have the opportunity to rub off on others. Have you ever been somewhere where you were judged just based on the people that you were with. For instance, if you're a middle school boy and you're walking in the mall, everybody's going to assume that you smell bad. It's just an assumption. Um, it may not be true, but it probably is true. Yeah, you know, it probably is true. Um, if, if you are a pirate fan, which my family and I, we went to the pirate game last night. If you are a pirate fan, it is automatically assumed that you love pain and suffering. Um, if you're a pirate fan, it is assumed that you, are, you have a defeated personality and you just hate your life. Um, that's that's perfectly good assumption if you are a pirate fan. I, I tend to, um, to be harsh in my judgments towards some people. In fact... I believe that if you're from New England and you liked Tom Brady and you're a Patriots fan, you are a cheater. You just are. And um, you clearly are being judged by the people that you're with and that you're around. Can you tell I'm excited about the NFL, that I'm excited about watching the Steelers today? I can't wait to do that. Um, we, we assume that all Eagles fans throw junk out on the field and get in fights because that's what we see on TV. And so we just make these assumptions about people because they're branded by the people that they're around. I have this friend who's a farmer. He's not just a farmer. He like wants to be an Amish farmer. He doesn't want to have um, gasoline-powered engines. He wants to have like giant horses and they do all the farming and they work the soil by hand and they take care of everything naturally. Um, he's crazy. And so um, he's also an opera singer, believe it or not. And if you looked at my friend Jeremy, never, ever, ever would you ever assume that he was an opera singer. You would never make that assumption looking at him, talking to him, that he sings opera. Because we have this idea of what an opera singer is, right? We have this idea that opera singers, not only do they not associate with farmers, they don't even think about farmers, right? That opera singers are somehow on this like other level. And, and this guy, Jeremy, he, he's doing both. When we hang around certain groups of people, we tend to get lumped into their categories and we get judged based on the people that we're hanging out with. Some of you, um, you have had situations in your life where you were around the wrong people. I mean, you might have gotten in trouble. You might have done something very stupid because you were hanging out with the wrong people. But you know, it can also be on the flip side that you can also be hanging around the right people and they can be rubbing off on you in the right way, which is exactly why we're glad you're here today. Because hopefully, we are all rubbing off on each other. Hopefully, our desire to follow Christ and know Christ is rubbing off on the people around us. It's why we promote and we love small groups so much in this church, because we believe in relationships. We believe that our relationships affect those around us. We believe that you and I, we can make each other better. Right, that we can, we can encourage each other, we can challenge each other. And in our small groups, we have opportunity to do that over and over and over again. And so I want us to, if you want to pull out your white insert that you got in your bulletin today, you can follow along. I want to point out just three ways quickly that God makes us better. Number one, God uses people who build you up. 
First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other, passing on to others God's many kinds of blessings. Do you remember maybe a month, month and a half ago, I talked to you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that we all have these gifts that have been given to us. When we give our lives to Jesus, the Holy Spirit imparts these gifts into our lives, these special abilities that we all have. And what was the purpose? What was the purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? The purpose was to build up the body of Christ. You have been given a gift to build up the body. Others have been given gifts to build you up. And I'm sure that you've been around people that like every time you're around them, they're like, wow, I feel so good about myself. Like this person is always making me feel so amazing. They're always building me up. They're encouraging me because I know that they love me and they care about me. But don't you know people that are the exact opposite? That when you're around them, they're actually tearing you down because they're trying to build themselves up. That they're saying things that are mean, negative, harsh, whatever, about you or to you because they're hoping that by tearing you down, it might build themselves up. Here's my question to you. Who would you rather be with? Would you rather hang out with the people that are building you up and making you better or would you rather be with the people that are tearing you down and making themselves better? And it's also a reflective question for yourself too. What kind of person would people say you are? Are you the kind of person that builds other people up? You see, God gave you specific gifts and abilities so that you can pour into other people. Number two, God uses others, God uses other people to make you better. Our scripture verse in that video was Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. You know, it's part of God's plan to use somebody else to make you better. He wants to use other people to make you a better person. He has placed people into your life that can speak life instead of death into your life. There are people in your life that God has placed in front of you that can encourage you, that can help you. But you know, on the other side of the coin, there are people in our lives that don't make us better, right? We, we know those people that when we're around them, we talk differently, we act differently, we behave differently, we think differently. And those people aren't helping us be better people. In fact, they're making us worse people. When I was a kid, um, my neighbor, his name was Pat, um, he was two years older than me. And Pat... Um, Pat did not have my best interest uh, at hand. In fact, Pat would convince me all the time to do dumb things because he was a couple years older than me and I just listened to whatever he said. And so I would follow him and do whatever he wanted me to do and I was constantly getting in trouble when I was hanging around Pat. And I would come home and my parents would listen to the way that I would talk and they would say, you're hanging around Pat too much, you're turning into him, you're acting just like he is. When we hang around people, we become like them. And, and when we hang around the wrong people, they don't make us better. We need to find the right people to hang around with. Number three, God uses others to make us better. God uses other people to build us up, and God uses people to pray for you. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so God can heal you. When a believing person prays, Great things happen. Do you know anyone that, that prays for you? Do you have anybody in your life that you know they pray for you? One of the really cool things about way, the way we've designed our small groups is that there is time for prayer at the end where the people that are gathered can share 
requests, can share concerns, things that are going on in their lives, and then we pray for each other. It's so amazing to know that the people that are in your small group are praying for you, and then they come back. I don't know if this is the way every small group is designed, but this is the way ours is, and then whenever we come back the next week, we say, hey, how did this thing go? Or that thing that you talked about that you wanted us to pray for, we are praying for you this week. What happened? How's it going? Is God making a difference? Is he, is he changing things in your life? And we get to talk about it. It's so amazing to know that there are people that are praying for you. I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that every single day, even though I have not lived in my parents' home for 23 years, I know every single day that my mother will walk out of her house, go down the path into the woods and sit beside the creek that is right beside their house and she prays for me. That's awesome. That's amazing to know that my mother is praying for me. And so regardless of whether or not this has been a part of your life, it can be now. And you can be a part of a small group where you have people that are praying for you. God wants to use other people. God wants to use you to pray for others, and he wants to use others to pray for you. That's what it's, what's part of being a part of the body of Christ. Now, as we've looked at these three ways that God uses others to make us better, I want you to think about two questions. Okay, two questions. What kind of mark, what kind of brand are the people that you hang around with leaving on you? The people that are with you, what kinds of marks are they leaving on you? What kinds of things are they impacting you with? Are they making you better? Are they building you up? Can you count on them to pray for you? Here's a second question. What kind of mark are you leaving on others? Are you making others better? Are you building up others? Are you praying for others. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it that others are making an impact in our lives and we're making an impact on the lives of the people that we're with day after day. We're, we're marking their lives. We can tell story after story after story, I'm sure in this room, of people that have impacted our lives. Things that people have said, things that people have done that have impacted our lives and affect us forever. It's why it's so important that we find the right people to be around, people that are affecting us, people that are speaking into our lives, the people that we allow to speak into our lives are people of God that want to see us become better, deeper followers of Jesus Christ. When I was in college, I, I took a class called Understanding Spousal Abuse. And um, I wasn't really super interested in the topic. It wasn't part of my major, but I had heard from a few people that it was a really easy kind of blow off class, that it wasn't very difficult. And I knew that there was a bunch of pretty girls in the class. And so I was like, sign me up for that one. I mean, it's easy, bunch of pretty girls in the class. Let's go there. And so I head to the class and um, I learned so much about myself in that class. Things that I had never expected to learn I had grown up in like this Christian bubble where I went to church all the time, I went to Christian school, and I didn't really know people, um, or, or I didn't know that it was happening where people had been abused in their families. Um, I, I don't certainly know it to the extent that I do now that my wife is a school counselor and she sees this every single day. Um, I was not accustomed to that at all. And so sitting through that class, I learned so much about, um, I had this mindset that why wouldn't a woman just leave? If she was being abused, just leave. And I didn't understand all of the circumstances. I didn't know how hard it was. And I didn't understand all those things. And so that's not what I want to share with you. I want to share with you this next part that I learned, which was how generational abuse is. That that family after family after family deals with this same thing because it's become normal in their life. And so people that were abused tend to be abusers. That people who have experienced abuse in their life will be more likely to share and show abuse 
in their life to their children and their spouse. And so this, it's this generational aspect that people have been changed and marked and branded by these circumstances that have happened in their lives. And they reciprocate those things and then they treat their family in the same way. People, circumstances, situations mark us forever. The things that happen in our lives change our lives. And it's why being marked by Christ is so important. It's why when, when we understand how important it is, it changes the way that we parent. It changes the way that we're aunts and uncles and friends. It changes us because we have been changed. I want you to look at a couple things um, this morning about how this mark changes our lives. Number one, this new mark, our brand, brings new life. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, the Apostle Paul says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness. You see, being branded by Christ means that you don't act, you don't talk, you don't look like you used to look before you were branded by him. Being branded by Christ means that you put off the old self and that you begin a new way of life. Being branded by Christ means that you put an end to the generational curse. Being branded by Christ means that you stop the abuse, that you stop the cursing, the negativity, the cheating, the lying. And you remember that you were created to be like Jesus. Being branded by Christ affects every aspect of our lives. Being branded by Christ means you have been given the opportunity for newness. You see, I, I, I worry that, that for so many in the church, we look like everybody else. We look the same before we were branded by Christ. We look the same as we did then. We talk the same. We think the same. We act the same. And the world thinks that we're just like them because we act and we talk just like them. And I, and I think that, that if the Apostle Paul were here today, he would say, wait a minute, if there's no change in your life, how could you say that you've even been branded by Christ? If there's no change, if there's no evidence of the change in your life, how can you possibly even say that you've been branded? Because to be branded, to have a new mark, is to have a new life. I don't know if you've ever um, thought about like your old shoes and your new shoes. When, when you want to go somewhere nice, you don't put on your old shoes, you put on your new shoes. Because your old shoes are dirty and falling apart and stinky. And your new shoes... That's funny, huh? <laughs> your new shoes. Certain people have stinky old shoes, right? And so your new shoes are clean and they look nice. God has not called you to put on your old shoes. He's called you to walk in your new shoes. To walk in the new, the new life that you've been given. Secondly, our, our new mark means that we can follow God's way. Here's the thing, friends. There are people and things every single day that are calling you to their way. Television shows, internet, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, friendships, neighbors, family members, magazines, newspapers, I don't, I don't know, all the things that we could possibly name, are calling you to their way. Calling you to live your life in such a way that you emulate them, that you behave like them, that you talk like them, that we try to fit in into their way. And so when we have a new mark, this is a new way of calling us to God's way, not the world's way. Look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua says, Study this book of the law continually. Meditate on it day and night so you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. Only then will you succeed. If you want to know how to follow God's way, you must find yourself meditating on God's word. 
studying God's word, learning God's word. When we're branded by Christ, we're no longer wanting to follow the ways of the world. We want to follow God's ways. And the only way we can understand and know what God's ways are are to meditate on God's word, study his word. I said it last week that, that when, when we have been so overwhelmed by the love of Christ, when we have been so overwhelmed by the fact that God would love me and would change my heart, that God would see into me and see the sin and the wretchedness inside of me and be willing to come and to die on a cross for me, then, then I am just so overwhelmed by that that I can't help but want to follow God's way. I can't help but want to give my life to him and honor him in the way that I live my life because of what he's done for me. And so if we want to follow God's ways, we've got to meditate on God's word. Being branded by Christ gives us a new life. Being branded by Christ helps us to follow God's ways. And it also allows us to stand for God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 says, Therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be, be, may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Here's, here's the thing, church. We as a church, and, and I don't necessarily mean LUMC, I'm talking about the big church. We have stood and stared at evil for so long and not stood against it. We, we have looked at evil and we're beginning to call evil good. The church has not stood for what is right. In fact, and this is happening in our denomination right now, the church has allowed culture to say, this is what is good, regardless of what your Bible says. You see, God has called us to stand for what is right and true. How do we find out what truth is? How do we know where truth is found? How do we know what to stand for? Well, some people would say, look around and figure out what everybody stands for and stand for that. I, I totally disagree with that. What, what does Paul tell us? Paul says that we're supposed to be able to be ready for when that day of evil comes, that we can stand our ground and having done everything to stand, that we need to be able to point people back to truth. Where does truth come from? Come from? Truth comes from the word of God. And so for us, we need to be so meditating on God's word, like we just said, that we can stand for truth, that we do know the difference between right and wrong. And if we don't know God's word, we're not going to know the difference between right and wrong. And we are going to be like what, what the Bible says, we're going to be like shifting on waves that we're back and forth because we don't know the difference between right and wrong because we have not studied God's word. And so we haven't, as a church, stood against evil because we didn't even know it was evil because we didn't know that God had called us to stand and to fight against the enemy. And when we don't stand and fight, the enemy just runs rampant. To be branded by Christ means that we stand up for what is right, that we fight for justice and equality, that we protect the unborn, that we point people to the truth, and we live out the truth in our own lives. I could talk about that all day. We're going to keep moving. What marks us for change? A new mark reveals God's plan for your life. Psalm 119 verse 7 says, When I learn your righteous laws, I will thank you by living as I should. You see, this new mark that we have helps me to become the person that God really wants me to be. When my life is consumed with following Christ, when, when I know that my identity is in Christ, whenever I know that I've been bought with a price, when I understand that God loved me enough to die for me on the cross and that my life was valuable, I begin to see that God has a plan for me and I begin to see how it is rolled out in front of me. You see, God's mark on my life helps me see what God has in store 
and shows me how to get there. Number five, a new mark is a witness to others. I love this one. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. You have heard me teach many things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Teach these great truths to trustworthy people who are able to pass them on to others. When you and I are branded by Christ, when we have a new mark in our lives, change happens. And when change happens, people notice. People notice when you look different. People notice when you talk different. People notice when you act differently, when you don't do the same things that they do. We talked about this last week, that your new mark, your brand, is your witness to a world who so desperately needs to know that there is a God who loves them and cares about them and loves them enough to come to earth and to give up his life so that they might be ransomed, that they might be transformed, that they might be changed, that they might be saved from their sin. And it is your witness, it is your life that gets to be Jesus to those people. It is your witness that's going to change the world. It's your witness that's going to change your neighbors and your friends and your co-workers and your family members. It's your witness that's going to make a difference in the lives of others. And so let the world know, let the world see that you are unconditionally loved by one who gave everything for your salvation. And the last thing I want to say, I want to keep it really short here. We're going to do this quickly. I want us to remember that we need, we need to remind ourselves daily who we are and who we belong to. If you think about like a, a horse or a cow that has been branded, they take initials or they take numbers or, or whatever it might be and they, they um, make it on the steel, they heat it up and they put it on the horse, they put it on the cow and, and forever that cow or that horse it is reminded of who it belongs to. That anybody that looks at that horse or that cow knows who that horse or that cow belongs to. That it belongs to farmer such and such. It belongs to ranch such and such. It belongs to such and such corporation because it's been branded by it. And we need to be reminded every single day who we belong to. Who you are. You are a daughter of the king which makes you a princess. You are a son of the king of kings, which makes you a prince in the kingdom of heaven. Remember who you are so that you can keep your brand, so that you can be reminded of your brand, that you belong to Jesus. And so three things super fast. We need to make a commitment to connect to the right people. If we're going to keep our brand, if we're going to be reminded of our brand, then we need to make a commitment to connect with the right people because connecting with the right people is going to make all the difference in the world. Finding those people that are going to speak life into your life is going to make a humongous difference to remind you of the brand of Christ in your life. Number two, make a commitment to grow on your own. Just showing up at church on Sunday morning and saying, oh, what the pastor brings today is going to be good enough for me for the whole week. Man, that is a lie from the pit of hell that's going to, challenge, or that's going to keep you from growing in your faith. You've got to make a commitment on your own to say, I am going to study and meditate on God's word. I'm going to spend time in prayer learning more and more about God and worshiping him on my own. Number three, put together an action plan. Know how to respond. Things are going to happen in your life. There's going to be triggers that are going to show up in your life. Temptation will be lurking around every single corner. Things are going to happen that are going to cause you to get busy and to, to resist spending the time alone with God. And so you need to create an action plan so that when those things come, that you're ready to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. I made a commitment to grow. I made a commitment to show up at my small group so that whenever stuff happens, when the Steeler game is on at 8 o'clock p.m. and our small group starts at 7, I'm not skipping small group because I made a commitment. When I get up early in the morning 
and I'm tired, yet I know that I'm supposed to spend time alone with God, and I'm busy, and i got to get somewhere. I have an action plan. I've committed to growth, and so I'm going to still continue to read God's Word because I made a commitment to it. You see, by keeping our brand, by remembering who we are, we're focused every single day on how we're going to become more and more like Jesus. And so, God, I just thank you so much for the fact that you loved us enough that you wanted us to be branded by you. That, God, you placed this mark on us as Christians. Thank you so much that we can hold on to our Savior, that we can hold on to our God who loved us enough to die for us. And so, Lord, I, I recognize that in a, in a group this size, there are certainly, certainly people, Lord, maybe who have never been marked or, or maybe people that have, but it's not evident. Or, or maybe, God, we're hanging out with the wrong people and they're not reminding us of our brand. In fact, they're trying to scrub our brand off of us. Help us to look deep down inside of our hearts and, and really say, God, what are the things, who are the people that are keeping my eyes off of you? Who are the people that are affecting me in the wrong way that aren't making me better? And God, I, I just pray that you would stir inside of our hearts a passion so powerful to, to be involved in small groups that uh, we, we would sign up today, God, that we would get involved, that we would long so much for those deep relationships. Thank you for the commitment here at LUMC to relationships. Thank you for bringing people in our lives who help us to grow and to be more and more like you. Thank you for your incredible love. God, be glorified in the worship that we continue to give to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand up and let's